Hey everybody watching PAX Online today, welcome to my panel, Controller Bending. This panel is going to be about covering the weird side of gaming where we play games with the wrong controller. To give a little insight about what controller bending is, think about those people who play Dark Souls with DK bongos or Fall Guys with a guitar hero controller. The goal of my panel today is to introduce to y'all what controller bending is and if you're interested how to step your own weird controller adventures. This is my first ever pre-recorded panel and I appreciate PAX Online for giving me a chance to do my controller bending panel on their website. I apologize in advance, I do not have a webcam for this panel as my webcam decided to take a vacation during uh, the time I needed to record for the panel. So in the meantime, enjoy these random pictures that I have of myself as uh, a placeholder for my webcam. Speaking of myself, let's get started with some introductions. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm SuperLewis64, you can just call me Lewis for short. I'm currently the host for a show on YouTube called Controller Bending. Similar to this panel, my show is about how I design controllers to play games that they weren't meant for. A little background on me, I studied to become a computer scientist in college, but like most degrees, I decided to do something totally different and got into game development. I'm not the best at words, and instead of fumbling around to explain myself, I actually made a video to introduce Controller Bending and my channel to y'all. Yo what's up guys, I'm SuperLewis64 and on my channel, I like to play games wrong. And by wrong, I mean really wrong. Now that we have a sneak peek of what controller bending can be, let's ask the most important question for the panel. What is controller bending? The best way to explain controller bending to other people is that it's the act of modding controllers to play games that they weren't meant for. So you usually play games with the right controller that was built for them. For example, you play PC games with a keyboard and mouse, Xbox games with an Xbox controller, PS4 games with a PS4 controller, and if you really like drifting, you play Nintendo Switch games with a Joy-Con. So the fundamental idea of controller bending is to play our favorite games with a different control scheme. I personally got into controller bending because like movies, I really don't like playing the same game over again. I feel like the charm is gone once you beat it. However, when I play the game again with a weird controller, I feel like the charm comes back for me. For me, it feels like I'm playing the game once again as I am learning how to beat the game with a new controller. And when I say a new controller, it can honestly be anything. I like to put controllers people use to play games wrong into three separate categories. The first category is normal controllers, and I consider these controllers to be like the Xbox controller and the N64 controller. It may not be considered challenging to others, but I do enjoy playing games with the Xbox controller in general. Controller bending isn't always about making challenge runs. In the past, I've used an input converter to let me use my Xbox controller on the PS4. I personally enjoy the feel of the Xbox controller way more than I do the PS4 controller. So through controller bidding, I was able to play my favorite PS4 exclusives with my favorite controller. The next section is probably what y'all are most familiar with when it comes to controller bending. And this is my favorite section because it's all about rhythm controllers. Depending on how old you are, you're probably like me and you probably grew up with a ton of rhythm controllers. I'm talking guitar hero guitars, rock band drums, sync mic microphones. Uh, I have a bunch of DDR dance pads in my closet. And honestly, who can forget the most amazing gaming accessory ever made, the Donkey Kong bongos. But yeah, this is probably what you've seen online whenever you see someone play games with a weird controller. And honestly, I believe it's because it's a lot of fun to play games with a guitar hero controller, or try to get some exercise and beat games with a DDR dance pad. But up next is a category I'm really interested in, and it's all about weird, weird controllers. And by weird controllers, it can actually range from controllers that are really hard to find, like the Resident Evil Chainsaw, or with modern technology, you can turn anything into a controller. In fact, I've seen someone play Overwatch with a bunch of bananas. The future of gaming isn't cloud computing, it's actually being able to eat your own controller. So that's a general overview of what controller bending can be all about. Up next, I have a couple examples of what it looks like to play games with the categories I mentioned earlier. Here's a couple examples of modding controllers to play the games that they weren't meant for. In the past, I was able to mod a Power Glove controller to play Overwatch with it, and the wizard wasn't kidding, the Power Glove is bad. Really, really bad. However, I did have a ton of fun trying to mod this Power Glove to work for Overwatch. It was really interesting to see if this old controller can hold up to modern games, and overall, I think it did an okay job. Here's a quick clip to show you what it looks like to play Overwatch with a Power Glove. Uh, let's put 
this right here. Hopefully, I don't see this. Or she didn't see that. No, 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 no. Yeah, they don't see it. They don't see it. Okay, All right, we're going in. Bop, bop. We did it. Okay, get on, boys. Yes, you can if I miss all my shots. Oh, I'm so bad at this game. No, <laughs> so I'll take it. It doesn't even say victory. But, oh, there it is. Yeah. All right, editor, just edit my face in there somewhere. Thank you. Another example I wanted to show y'all is my Ring Fit Adventure mod that I use to play other games with. I really love this fitness controller. I think it's the best fitness controller that was ever made. However, I felt a little bit bad that it's only used for Ring Fit Adventure, so I decided to go out of my way to mod the Ring Fit controller to work on other games. I was able to figure out how to make my Joy-Cons detect me running, and I was able to make that work for different games. For example, I was able to make the Ring Fit Adventure controller work for Mario Kart. I was able to mod it to make sure my car only moved when I ran in real life. This Ring Fit Adventure mod allowed me to get some exercise in when I played Mario Kart. It also gave me a excuse to why I got last every race, so uh, thanks Ring Fit Adventure. And don't get me started with Breath of the Wild, I also made a Ring Fit Adventure mod work for Breath of the Wild, and it was, it was a disaster. I was able to make the act of squatting turn into a controller input, and for whatever reason I made squats control my start button. And with all the manning you have to do in Breath of the Wild, I had to end my session pretty early because the whole session turned into a leg dig as I had to squat every time I needed to eat some food. But those are some examples of what normal controllers you can use for controller bending. Up next I wanted to show you what it looks like to play games with the wrong rhythm controller. As I mentioned earlier, the DDR dance pad is one of my favorite controllers of all time. Dance Dance Revolution was a staple game in my childhood, and being able to play games with the same controller makes my heart flutter. To prove I'm not the only crazy one that plays games with weird controllers, I had a couple content creators send me a clips of them beating games with a DDR dance pad. At first we had the amazing Solaria beat the first boss of Dark Souls with a DDR dance pad. For those who think FromSoft games aren't just really hard rhythm games, check this out. Up next is the king of dance pad gaming, Peking Boo. Not only does he speedrun games with his dance pad, he has more wins than I'll ever have on Fall Guys, and all he does is use his DDR dance pad. If he can get a crown with a DDR dance pad, I have no excuse for being bad at Fall Guys. Oh, oh, oh okay. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Come on, dude. Oh. oh my god. No, dude, get up! <laughs> no! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! So those are a couple examples to see what it looks like to play games with a rhythm controller. Before we talk about how to play games wrong, we still have one last section to go over, the weird controller section. And if you thought what you saw earlier was a little bit weird, well with modern technology, anything could be a controller now. With the power of products like Makey Makey, you can turn literally anything into a controller. For example, for a charity event, I was able to turn a bunch of bananas into a controller for Dark Souls. Using Makey Makey, I was able to turn each banana into its own function. For example, I had a dodge banana, an attack banana, a heal banana. Um, actually, that's a sentence I didn't think I would ever say. But long story short, you can use stuff like Makey Makey to turn anything into a controller. If you live in Texas like I do, it gets really hot in the summer, so I even decided to make a controller out of ice cubes. Will the ice cube controller keep you cool during the summer? Yes. Now is the Ice Cube controller a good controller to play games with? No. No. No, not at all. Well, now that I've shown you a bunch of examples of what controller bending could be all about, you're probably wondering, why would you ever do this? Why would you ever controller bend? And to that question, uh, I really don't have a good answer for you, but I can relate it to another question I like to give the people, and that's why do people put pineapple on pizza? 
But seriously, why do people put pineapple on pizza? Like, cheese, pepperoni, sausage is all you need. But after asking that question to myself, I can finally understand why me and many other people play games wrong. It's just fun. Uh, playing games with the wrong controller is just really fun. It may not be as fun as putting pineapple on pizza, but to the majority of us, I feel like we play games wrong because it's just a lot of fun. It also seems like the majority of us are super into challenge runs. And honestly, it seems like playing games with the wrong controller can be its own category for challenge runs. I did mention earlier for me, playing games with the wrong controller just increases the replayability for me. For example, for example, I like to play Dark Souls with a bunch of weird controllers because it feels like every time I play it with a new controller, the playthrough feels really new to me. As much as I love FromSoft games, I feel like it gets a little bit boring when you try to play it again because you already know how to beat the boss. However, if you put a pair of DK bongos in front of me, I'll have a lot of fun playing Dark Souls again because now I have to figure out how to beat a boss with a new controller. And on the topic of stressful games like Dark Souls, I do believe that controller bending or playing games with the wrong controller could be really stress relieving. And you're probably wondering, how is playing Dark Souls with DK Bongos stress relieving? Wouldn't it be more stressful now that you have to beat a game with a harder controller? And I thought so too until I started doing it, and honestly one of my favorite things to do after a stressful workday is just boot up a game with a weird controller. And using some controllers like the DDR Dance Pad, you can actually get a really good exercise with them. In the quest to lose my weight, I've actually got some progress by just playing games with a dance pad. Even with easy games like Kingdom Hearts, I still got a workout. Spamming the X button hits differently when you actually have to move around with your feet to play the game. And with the Ring Fit Adventure bot I mentioned earlier in the presentation, working out has a whole new meaning when you actually have to have fun doing it. It really just makes me wish Nintendo would make this controller work for other games because exercising and gaming is probably the most fun I've ever had trying to stay healthy. Especially during these times where we're all just kind of stuck at home. But yeah, there's a couple explanations on why we play games with the wrong controller. And in the past, people have argued that we're doing this for the views, and to an extent, that's kind of true. But I will say the amount of work that we put into playing games wrong is nowhere near worth the amount of views that we get, so we're doing this mostly because it's a lot of fun. But hey, if you're interested in playing games with the wrong controller too, up next we're going to go over how to do it. So the process of playing games with the wrong controller has gotten easier as time has gone by. After doing this panel of multiple packs, we finally got down a really easy way to get into controller bending. So with these four easy steps, now you can play games with the wrong controller. We'll go into these steps a little more in detail a little bit later, but right now let's do a quick rundown. At first, you need to pick a game, and as much as this sounds like a no-brainer, we'll go into details why this actually kind of matters. Up next, you want to find a controller you want to play the game with, and up next is one of my favorite parts of controller bending, and that's figuring out how to get the controller to work on your game and designing it to work for the game. Designing the controller is really hard to do the first time around, so I have a couple examples coming up to show you how I got through making my controls work for different games. After all that is done, you are ready to play the game with the wrong controller. Controller bending isn't that hard to do, and it gets way easier the more times you do it. Now that we know how to do a controller bend, let me go into each step with a little more detail to give you an insight on how I go about making my controllers work on different games. So the first step is picking a game. My first advice for the first game you ever play with the wrong controller is to pick a game that you don't mind losing a ton in. You want to pick a game that you love and you don't mind losing in because with a new controller you're going to be spending most of your time learning how to play the game with that new controller. For example, for people who are new into controller bending, I would rather you play games like Fall Guys instead of Dark Souls. With a game like Fall Guys, it's really easy to pick up and there's not a lot of controls you need to map your controller to. I don't recommend playing games like Dark Souls with your first weird controller because that game can get really frustrating when you lose over and over again. The first game I ever played with the wrong controller was actually Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 is a really wholesome platform that I was able to learn how to use my dance pad with because the game wasn't too hard but it gave enough challenge for me to continue. Another big tip in regarding how to pick a game, make sure you pick a game that's on PC. It's just way, way easier to play PC games with a weird controller because there's multiple free software that helps you connect your controller to the game. We'll go into a bit more detail about the software you can use later in the presentation, but for now, stick to PC games. The next step is picking a controller. My advice on this is pick a controller that has a USB port attached to it. Most of the time, older controllers might not have a USB port connected to it. If your controller doesn't have a USB port, don't worry. Most of the time, an online retailer will have a converter for a controller, so if you just look it up, you'll be able to find a way to connect your controller to your PC. And if you're looking for any weird controllers, check out your local gaming store. I found the majority of my controllers through thrift stores and just random mom and pop movie and video game stores. And if you're looking for a specific controller, definitely hit up Amazon and eBay. Most of the time, you'll definitely find somebody selling your controller, so definitely hit up those online retailers if you can. Amazon and eBay are really good sources to find input converter for your controllers as well if you ever need them. Another thing I want to bring up, even if you're not interested in controller bending, the process of finding the controller and having a controller is really fun. Through controller bending, I actually have an excuse now to collect controllers. Even if I never use my Donkey Kong bongos ever again, it's actually a really nice conversational piece to have in your apartment. But that's a conversation for another day. After you pick your controller up next, we need to design the controller and connect it to your game. This part will have to go into much more detail, but at first glance, the biggest thing about this is changing your inputs to match the game you're playing. Most of the time, the controller that you're using will already have some predetermined inputs. This is where you would want to use software to change those inputs to match the game you're playing. My favorite piece of software for controller bending is called Joy to Key. This is a free software that 
allows you to change your controller inputs into keyboard inputs. This program also emulates mouse movement, so if you want to play a first-person shooter with your rear controller, this program's for you. As long as your controller connects to your PC via USB, Joy Key should pick it up and allow you to change its inputs into keyboard inputs. The hard part comes from designing the controller to work for you. For example, let's say we're playing Dark Souls with a pair of DK bongos. Since the DK bongo only has 5 inputs, what controls can I even map to my DK bongos? Another good question is like, where do I put all my button inputs? Do I put the attacks on the right bongo, or do I put the movement on the left bongo? That's the stuff you have to think about when designing a controller. This is the part of controller bending I really like. The challenge of designing a controller to play a different game with is always fun to figure out. But once you design your controller, you're ready to play the game and have fun. For today's panel, I wanted to walk you all through two controller bending examples I had ready for you. With these two examples, I hope to show you what processes I take to play games with Wii controllers. For today's example, I wanted to show you what it looks like to play Halo with a Guitar Hero controller, and what it looks like to play Ghost of Tsushima with an actual Katana controller. We'll go through all four steps for each game and then show you some general gameplay of what it looks like to play the game with the Wii controller. At first, we have a wholesome chef in space simulator called Halo. I've always wanted to do a Wii controller run for this game, as it's one of the games I played all the time growing up. Now that the Master Chief Collection is on PC, it's way easier to mod controllers for. Now that you couldn't mod the Guitar Hero controller to work on Xboxes, it's just way cheaper and way easier to do it on PC. One thing to keep in mind is that Halo is the first person shooter that uses joysticks heavily to play the game. As you can tell, the Guitar Hero controller doesn't have any joysticks. In fact, let's go a little more detail about the Guitar Hero controller itself. If you don't know what the Guitar Hero controller is, it was one of the most popular rhythm game controllers ever to come out in the mid-2000s. The whole point of the controller was to make it feel like you were playing an actual guitar, or at least try to make it feel like you were playing the guitar. Uh, in fact, the game did not help you at all learning how to play a guitar, as I was let down as a teenager thinking I could. So a quick rundown about the Guitar Hero controller. The Guitar Hero controller has about 10 buttons to use. The fretboard has 5 colored buttons. You can strum the guitar up and down. Interesting enough, the Guitar Hero controller actually has some motion controls in it. Swinging it just right activates the motion controller, so that's one input. And the last few buttons are the start and select button at the bottom and the whammy bar. What sucks for me is I still use my PlayStation 2 guitar from way back in the day and my whammy bar just doesn't work. However, the good thing about Guitar Hero controllers is that they're really easy to find. Every time I go to my local gaming store or check online, I see at least one or two new listings of the Guitar Hero controllers, so if you're looking for one, it's really easy to find. What's really good about Guitar Hero controllers is that even if there's not a USB port for your guitar, there are plenty of USB converters for Guitar Hero controllers out there on the internet, so if you don't have one, definitely look it up online. One last good thing about the Guitar Hero controller is that I feel like they're really durable. I mentioned it earlier, but I'm still using my PlayStation 2 Guitar Hero controller from way back when. This controller has outlasted so many things in my life. I'm kind of upset that it's even lasted longer than some of my current gen controllers. I'm looking at you, Joy-Con. But now that we've picked the controller, let's go ahead and design the Guitar Hero controller to work for Halo. So the first thing I'd like to do is figure out what controls are needed to play the game. Looking at Halo's controller setting, I was able to find out how many buttons it takes to play Halo. After some investigation, it takes about 14 buttons to play Halo, along with two joysticks. More importantly are the two joysticks, since this is a first person shooter you need to be able to move and look around at the same time. And each joystick has about 360 degrees of movement, so this might be a problem for the Guitar Hero controller. Speaking of the Guitar Hero controller, as you notice that there's only 10 buttons on the Guitar Hero controller. Another big issue is that the Guitar Hero controller doesn't have any joysticks, so moving and aiming is going to be a little bit awkward. So the way I go about designing a controller to work for a different game is first I gotta figure out what buttons are absolutely necessary to play with. To give you a good example, I highlighted each button input that is super necessary to play Halo with. These are the buttons I have to map onto my Guitar Hero controller. If I don't, I probably won't be able to beat the game. Since Halo is a first person shooter, I definitely need to map the joystick somehow to my Guitar Hero controller. We also definitely need to map the shooting inputs because last time I remember, I don't think you can do a pacifist run of Halo. One of the last buttons we definitely need to map is the action button. This allows us to interact with any objective, and I bet we can't beat the game without using this button. One really cool thing about controller bending is you find out there are a lot of buttons you just don't really need to use to beat the game. My favorite thing about playing Halo with a Guitar Hero controller is that you find out you don't really need a reload button if you just tactically use all your ammo and force yourself to reload anyway. Now how does it all look on a Guitar Hero controller? And well here it is, uh, I promise you this is the best layout I could come up with when trying to play Halo with a Guitar Hero controller. The idea is to have the most important buttons be placed where my fingers will most likely be at on the Guitar Hero controller. The movement buttons were mapped on the green and red buttons and the strumming as my hands will usually be resting here when I'm playing on the Guitar Hero controller. And since there are no joysticks, I actually have to mod the orange button to change the layout on my guitar on the fly. Whenever I hold the orange button, it actually changes my movement strumming into aiming. Allowing the orange button to change the layout on my controller, I'm actually able to feel all the other buttons to be used for the rest of the controls. Overall, you'd think playing Halo with a Guitar Hero controller would be way too hard, but after a couple of hours, you get used to it. What I will say is that it turns Halo from a first person shooter to a first person tactical game. As you don't have a way to be able to look and shoot at the same time, in order to fight people, you actually have to line up your shot before looking at them and then shoot. Most of my playthrough was me just hiding behind cover, lining up my shot, and once I get a chance, step out of cover and shoot. If I miss my shot, I just have to go back into cover and then readjust my aim. 
It is a little bit hard to explain what it feels like to play Halo with a Guitar Hero controller, so I prepared a couple of clips to show you just what it looks like. Oh, before I show you the clips, I forgot to mention how I connected my Guitar Hero controller to my PC. So my PlayStation 2 guitar doesn't actually have a USB port. However, I got really lucky and I was able to find a PlayStation 2 USB converter on Amazon. Using that, I was able to connect to my PC and open up Joy to Key. Using Joy to Key, I was able to map each of my Guitar Hero controller inputs to work for Halo. And that's where Halo being on PC really helps because now that Halo takes keyboard inputs, this was pretty easy to work out. But yeah, after setting it all up, here's what it looks like to play Halo with a Guitar Hero controller. Thanks. Okay, that's fine. That was such a bad bro. I broke his shields, but I literally choked on all my shots. Probably broke that one too. If they stand right here... That's one. Now we'll do it with a plasma rifle. Whoa, 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 what are you doing up there, dude? Come on, dog. You know I can't aim up. Did he dip? He dipped. I'm so mad. That was actually a good fight. Definitely don't want to mess with that guy. That's one. Uh oh, the kneeler. No, the kneeler. Dude, he's straight hiding back there. Oh, he's, he's, he's toying with me. Do you see how he's moving left or right right here? Why is he not down? Oh, he crouched? <gasps> Did we just be Jarvis Nation? Yo! <laughs> it only took three and a half hours on a Guitar Hero controller How much time to beat the first level. Pick a number on my side. Alright, so Legendary. Everyone sees this? This mistake we're about to do? Oh! Whoa! Oh. You don't see me. Okay, that works. I did not get a checkpoint. Okay, how do I still lose her? No! Get off the- get off the view! No! No! <laughs> There's nothing that can mess up the- oh, we got it, we got it! Done it! Yo, that it! It's that it! We're done! We're actually done. We're, we're done here. The storm has passed. The war is Dude, over. You can, you I got it. Either way, all of it solo legendary. On a guitar here. Now that I show you a pretty easy demonstration of what controller bending could be all about, next I wanted to show you what I really like about controller bending, and that's taking really old controllers and giving them a new breath of life and making them work for modern games. For the second example, I wanted to show you what it looks like to play Ghost of Tsushima with an actual katana controller. Through this example, I can show you how hard controller bending actually can get. As for this controller bending project, I actually had to start using some programs and some third-party input converters. Not only that, but the controller I decided to use is really, really hard to find. And luckily for me, I actually have a whole episode dedicated to this. So once we get to the part where we design the controller for Ghost of Tsushima, I can play the clips where I actually talk about how I went through designing it. We can skip the step about picking the game as I believe most of y'all are familiar what Ghost of Tsushima is all about. So let's go straight into talking about the Katana controller itself. So the Katana controller is actually made for a game called Anamusha 3. This game came out in 2004 on the PlayStation 2 and the developers wanted to make a controller that make the user feel like they're part of the game. At the time the Katana controller was released, it was considered to be a little bit gimmicky. I made a couple of clips to help explain the Katana controller in a little bit more detail. The whole point of the Katana controller is to make the user feel like they're actually playing the game. However, but like most plastic controllers, it kind of was passed off as a gimmick. I, on the other hand, think the Katana controller is rad as heck. When you're playing around with the Katana controller, it makes you feel like you're wielding some intense plastic in your hands. What's really cool about the Katana controller is actually just a PS2 controller in the shape of a Katana. Just like the PlayStation 2 controller, the Katana actually has two analog sticks and face buttons on the front and back of the grip. The main function of the Katana controller is that when you swing the controller itself, it activates a triangle button on a PlayStation 2 controller. So before I added my mods, the Katana controller itself was a little bit janky. 
Designing the Katana controller for Ghost of Tsushima wasn't too hard since the Katana controller was a PS2 controller. The Katana already has all the buttons needed to play Ghost of Tsushima, I just needed the program to remap the buttons to make it work for Ghost of Tsushima. Honestly, the hardest part about this build was getting the Katana to work on the PS4. The Katana actually functions by using a wireless receiver, so I needed to find a wireless PS2 converter to a USB converter to another converter that converts that into a PS4. Yeah, it's a lot of converters. In this controller build, I had to connect all my converters into one big converter called the Titan 2. I used the Titan 2 to be able to script my Katana controller to work for Ghost of Tsushima, and honestly, it's one of the best input converters you can use for consoles. Now, the biggest reason why I wanted to use the Katana controller for Ghost of Tsushima is because I really wanted to feel like an actual samurai and be able to swing my Katana around in real life to swing the Katana in game. For a 2004 controller, the Katana's motion controls are pretty okay. Now, here's a video explaining how I made the motion controls work for Ghost of Tsushima. The first thing I wanted to get working was swinging the katana to attack in game. It didn't take me long, but I was able to convert swinging the katana in real life to do a light attack in the game. How much health do you have? Jesus! <laughs> Oh my gosh! In order to do a heavy attack, I have to hold a button on the bottom of the grip and swing at the same time. Was he good? Oh, sorry dude. This is how it's gonna be. Now here's one of my favorite movements I was able to mod into the controller. Parrying. In order to get the parry to work in game, you have to swing the controller upwards while holding a trigger button on the back of the grip. It's really hard to parry as the button activation is at the apex of the swing. But yo, when you pull off the parry, you feel like an actual samurai in a movie. Yes! Oh, is he stunned? That's kinda cool. That was a cool fight. <laughs> See, I'm getting, I'm getting better at it. Okay, I'm learning how to parry correctly. Okay, with attacking and defending finally mapped out, here comes the final part of the controller, the standoff. Man, if I thought I was a wee before, nothing ever tops this. In order to do the standoff correctly, I had to sheath my katana right before the encounter. To complete the standoff, you actually have to hold the heavy attack button and pull out the katana at the right time, and that's, that's a lot of work to do. <laughs> No! <laughs> what? I am confused. <laughs> but after enough deaths, I channeled my inner cowboy and pulled off the duel. I'm on stream. Try to do this again. Wait, I gotta fight this dude? Shit. Oh my gosh. And there you go guys, that's what it looks like to play Ghost of Tsushima with a Katana controller. Now that we've gone over how to controller bend regular controllers, let's talk about the weird side of controller bending. So don't let your controller bending imagination stop at real controllers, anything can be a controller if you try hard enough. And now that we're in the future of 2020, there's actually really good hardware that can help you turn anything into a controller. The hardware I'm going to recommend to you today is one of my favorite pieces of hardware to ever use for controller bending. Today I present to you Makey Makey. Is your favorite inanimate object come with a USB port? If not, Makey Makey's got your back. So the idea of Makey Makey was to help kids design their own controllers out of everyday materials. The kids can make controllers out of things like Play-Doh, pencils, bananas, whatever you can think of, it usually works with Makey Makey. In a few moments I will show you a video from Makey Makey's website to help explain Makey Makey a little bit better, but Makey Makey is one of the easiest ways to turn anything you want into a controller and it's one of the easiest ways 
ways to get into controller bending. If you want more functionality, I would recommend an Arduino, but that's a little bit above the scope of this panel. However, if you are interested in learning more about the Arduino, make sure to DM me at the end of the panel. Going back to Mickey Mickey, I will recommend this to anyone who wants to turn anything to a weird controller. One of my favorite challenge runs of all times was beating Dark Souls with a bunch of bananas. And if it wasn't for Makey Makey, I don't think I would have found a way to play Dark Souls with Bananas. But before I go on a tangent about beating Dark Souls with Bananas, let me show you a video from Makey Makey to help explain what Makey Makey is all about. Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm Eric. We're graduate students at MIT Media Lab. We have a dream that everyone is an inventor. So we created Makey Makey to let you invent just by alligator clipping. Alligator clips stuff like bananas to your Makey Makey. When you touch the banana, your computer just thinks you're touching the keyboard. The front has arrow keys, spacebar, and mouse left click. When you're ready for more, flip the Makey Makey over and you've got more keyboard keys and support for the mouse. You can even use the board like an Arduino when you are ready. No programming, no breadboarding. You don't even have to install software. Just plug it in USB. And if you want more information on how to make your own controls with Makey Makey, definitely hit them up at MakeyMakey.com. Makey Makey's site is amazing and it has a good amount of tutorials to help you get started. And for those who are wondering what it looks like to play Dark Souls with bananas, here's a picture of my setup. It's probably one of the weirdest things I've ever done and I don't know how to explain to you what it feels like to play Dark Souls with bananas. But hey, if you ever break your controller out of rage, you could make your own controller with bananas for about 5 bucks. Alright, now that we've gone over a good amount of examples for controller bending, let's end this panel with a bang. I usually end my controller bending panels with a live demonstration, but due to some circumstances it might not be possible today. However, in the spirit of PAX, I decided to stream a live demonstration of control bending on my Twitch channel. For the stream, I decided to give myself a challenge of designing DK bongers to work with Fall Guys. And with the help of viewers, we actually came down to a pretty good build. So here's an edited video of the stream showing how we designed and played Fall Guys with DK bongers. Yeah, so today, I wanted to show you what it takes for me to play Fall Guys with a pair of DK bongers. So, those who don't know, these are the legendary Donkey Kong bongos. You can definitely tell there's some wear and tear on this. I've had this for many years. But yeah, it is bongo time. So this was originally made for, yeah, originally it was made for a rhythm game for Donkey Kong. And it's just been kind of a meme as a controller. I really like this controller because one, this is really durable. I don't know if you can hear this. Let me try to put it up against the mic, but. Oh, I forgot that's an input. I literally forget that if you slam the bongos on the sides, it's an input. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't ready for that to be an input, so I'll, that good segue into the next part. So there's actually six inputs on the DK bongos. You would think these two bongos are just one input. There's actually two on each. So there's a top and a bottom for each bongo. And you can definitely tell because you can see where my hands have been hitting over the past decade compared to like where they haven't been hitting but yeah so that so the bongo itself has five inputs just off the back so two per bongo and a little push button right here also the secret input we accidentally found out today and i keep forgetting is that if you clap or hit the bongo on the sides it's an input um yeah i don't want to do the clap because the clap hurts my hand pretty bad yeah clapping is 
is an input, but it's not consistent. So we're probably going to go with this. So now that we have five inputs, we need to figure out how are we going to translate these inputs into Fall Guys. And the first thing we're going to need to figure out is what are the Fall Guys controls and what we can get rid of. Because six buttons is probably not enough to play the game. But I think it's enough to get away with playing the game. I'll try to explain that later. So it's like I said, the DK bongs only have, they only have six inputs. Um, we're going to go to the controller. Actually, before we do that, I'm really dumb. How do I connect my DK bongos to my PC? I guess it's behind this not sponsored Fuzzy's Cup. It's a little bit of a process. So if you have a DK bongo before, or if you haven't had one, the DK bongo uses a GameCube input. Sorry, I can't really see over here. Here's a game put, GameCube input. I can't plug that into my PC as far as I know. Actually, let me even show you. I'm sure this won't break it. I tried plugging that into my PC, but this is a weird looking USB, so it's not going to get accepted. <laughs> Do you need two bongos? Actually, it would be a lot easier if I had two bongos, but I can make it work with one. And I'll show you how in a bit. Um, yeah, so what I'm what I'm using here is I'm connecting this GameCube output into a GameCube to PC converter. I think this one's called Mayflash. Really good. I forgot how much it is. I think it was like $25. I prefer this over the first party because this allows you to connect to your PC or any input converter without having to worry or download drivers. So if you have a chance called Mayflash, you can use your GameCube controls on it. Or if you have DK bongos like me, your DK bongos. Um, at least I'm sure they didn't. Okay, we're good. And then part two of the fun times. Um, this is connected to a another input converter. Can't really show you that far. The wires, I don't have the longest wires, but this is called a Titan 2. I'll probably zoom in on it when I have a chance. This allows me to change any controller input into whatever I want. So right now I'm changing the PC input of my DK Bongo input. Sorry. So I have the DK Bongos connected to a PC converter, which is connected to this, which is changing that converter or converting that input into an Xbox One input, and that's going straight into my PC. It's so confusing, I even trip myself on trying to explain it, but that's the process. Not a lot, of, there's no coding in this one. I'm just using the input converter to convert this into an Xbox One controller. Um, like I said, if you need a rundown, it's called a, if you, I'm um, have a Mayflash adapter into a Titan 2 into the PC. So that's the process. A little long, like it's like about 80 bucks total, but it allows me to do whatever I want with these DK bongos. Yeah, you're pretty much, yeah, uh, Disney, Disneyland's right. You're faking a controller via hardware. Um, I try not to edit these controllers. I can open these up and I've done it in the past, but I want to preserve these as long as I can because one, not being made anymore, and two, it's just easier when I can change the inputs on something else. Like, I don't mind doing some code on my input, input converter if that means I don't have to touch this to edit, you know what I mean? Or like, I don't I don't want to mess this up <laughs> because I don't know when the next time I'll be able to get some DK pop goes. <laughs> but yeah, now that we have that process down, let's look at the, the Fall Guys controls and see what we can do. Um, since this is technically an Xbox One controller, we can just go to the control settings and see what's all needed. And right now, I see a lot of buttons, but I don't really care about these buttons. All you really need is, we don't really worry about this. Actually, why is that at zero, that up here? Out of all these, all we really need is jump, dive, grab. Do we even need grab? Do we just lose grab games on purpose? I guess I could technically, we'll see, we'll see. We have six buttons. We're going to have to dedicate some to movement and we're going to have to dedicate some to the face buttons right here. No need for emotes. I don't care about showing anyone's names. So you're probably wondering, well, uh, ball guys, if you use an Xbox One controller, at least you move around with the left stick and then use the right stick to, um, look around. What I discovered while use while making the ring fit adventure mod work for fall guys is you don't really need any other movement outside of forward and backwards you can actually use the camera movement to look left and right so what we need to do on the bongos we need to actually have one bongo control movement and then one bongo control the aiming because if i can aim left or right that means i can turn left or right if i can move more forward and backwards and i think we're pretty good on that um the hardest part is how are we going to do jumping and diving um, I've been doing no jump runs, so we tactically don't need jumping. <laughs> and don't ask me why I've been doing no jump runs. It's a really fun challenge run. 
So maybe, yeah, I I've gotten down to, I have gotten it down to a science. You do not need to jump to be Fall Guys. Um, it is just really hard to win Fall Guys, but it is possible to win without it. So if we can get rid of jumping, we actually can have dive and then grab. And what we want is we want grab to be the button we can hold down because if we hold, you don't want to just like. Because these bongos you can hold press, but I, if I already have all four of these mapped out, I'm left with just hitting the bongo and pressing the start button. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, I'm, I'm going to show you, Polo, you can actually beat team games pretty easily. Sit there and just hope your team wins. But yeah, like I was saying, um, now if my only two buttons left are hitting the bongo and pressing the button here, we need to turn this into um, grab. And then hit to dive. And then if anything else, we can use our keyboard right in front of us and see what happens next. So this is a good time to bring up the second part, because as much as I want to use the control settings here, it'd be a lot easier if I use the keyboard by using a program called Joydy Key. Here it is. This is Joydy Key. I apologize if there's no music for a little bit because it's Fall Guys fun times. Now this is a good segment, segment, segue into showing what Joydy Key does. So Joydy Key takes any controller input and turns them into keyboard inputs. If you don't like programming or don't want to program like me because I'm really lazy, you could use this to get quick and quick easy setups for the player game. So when I press the button on my bongo, you can see that it lights up here. I'm gonna do what I'm going to do is set up each button. I'm really upset that that's still an input. I'm gonna set up each bongo button to a keyboard input. And we're gonna go based off what I was mentioning earlier and how I want to design the controller. Like I said when you press the bongo button it shows up on here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to map movement on the left bongo and camera movement on the right bongo. Um, hopefully it goes well. I think this uses key mouse. Yeah, okay. So let's go with movement. So first off, I want to move forward with the front part of this bongo. So I'm going to double click here, change this to W. And there we go. That's pretty simple. Similar to what the bottom bongo, I want to change to... I want to change, I want to change, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I want to change uh, the bottom bongo to move backwards. So I'm going to double click on the button that's highlighted, press S in here, and there we go. We at least set up the forward and backwards movement. Next, we want to move, or at least move the camera left to right based on what part of the bongo I press on the right side. So we're going to look to see what bongo button relates to Joydy key. Double click on the button, and instead of on the keyboard tab, we move to the mouse tab. And all we want to do is just move left, and that's it. And you can even see this work if I show you on screen. Um, actually, do I need to get off of this program? Oh, dang. Is this, it? <laughs> is this how it ends? Oh, there we go. See? When I press it... Oh, let me move it towards the screen. When I press the button, or when I press the bongo, it moves the mouse to the left. And that's, that's why I really like Jodi Key. Um, it makes all this stuff really, really easy. Um, personally, I, I would program this part out. However, um, just to show y'all how easy it is to set it up outside of getting all the hardware to convert the inputs, it's relatively easy and I'm almost done here. And up next, we want to change it to jump. I don't remember what jump is on keyboard. Spacebar? Okay. It is spacebar. Uh, so my jump bongo is button 8. Just hit spacebar here. Now whenever I press the spacebar, or this bongo button down here, it jumps. Hey. <laughs> and last thing is when we hit the bongo, I think, actually sorry, this, is, this needs to be grab. I'm so sorry. You want grab to be, grab is shift. Okay, let me change that real quick. We're going to change grab to, I guess shift is fine. Um, this needs to be, my start button bongo needs to be shift so I can hold it down and stretch my arm out and just command grab somebody and bring him back to my, my corner of the stage. So we're going to change that to shift. And then um, since we don't have enough buttons to have a jump, but I can prove to you that we don't need a jump to beat the game, hitting the side of the bongo should activate dive. And I believe that is control. It is. Okay, okay. So we're good here. Um, I literally forgot the button. There it is. That's control. Change this to control, and we should be good to go. One big thing we do 
need to do, and sorry if this causes a weird glitch or some bug on the screen, is that we need to relaunch Fall Guys to turn off um, controller input. Uh, this is the one thing that's kind of iffy. It depends on the game, but usually if you have both this and something connected, you will usually lose out on button inputs. Yeah, sorry, I went to the wrong menu. Yeah, and that's just the thing that just happens on Steam games. It's not all the Steam games I've had issues with, but the best way... It was after a certain update that um, I couldn't have my Jordi key and a controller plugged in at the same time in order for it to work. So I usually just go to my Steam profile and or Steam game settings and just turn off controller input. Hopefully this works. It was giving me some issues earlier. If that's the, that turns out to be an issue, no big deal. Um, we could even scam some more time to show you how to make this work with little bit of programming. But yeah, uh, let me see if I can show Can y'all see my mouse? You cannot see my mouse. Okay, my Fall Guys is working just fine. I'm a little sad that... Actually, can I... Actually, we'll just press play. Oops, that's not the play button. Let's just press play. I think we'll be fine. Let's find out if this works. If it doesn't work, then we'll go to the second portion where I just program it because... Fall Guys is one of those games that might have issues with having two things plugged in at once. I wish, like, I even turned off controller in, controller um, input and it's still coming up as an issue, so... But yeah, this is the first game with a Jordi Key input. I might get exposed. Jordi Key might expose me right here, so let's see if it works correctly. <laughs> if that ends up being an issue, I'm just gonna convert all my buttons I know what I need to do afterwards. Oh, DoorDash. So... Come on, work. Come on, dude. This is my first attempt. I haven't done... I haven't done this, actually, until now. Right? That's what I'm saying. Oh, look! See? The bongos work for that. Okay, we're in there. I need to probably change how this works, but... Oh, yeah, this is... What is happening? Okay, <laughs> okay, it works. I do need to switch over which Mongo does what because my. Oh no, oh no, <laughs> oh no. Okay, hold on. Why is this jump? Why is that jump? <laughs> Somebody help! No. <laughs> we might have lost. Let's go back to the drawing board and let's see what's up. <laughs> I don't, actually, I know what the issue is. Uh, so we're going to go to the controller and just turn this off. Change all the bindings. Literally change all the bindings. Yeah, that... This will be really easy to do, actually. Oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> okay, okay. I see... Sometimes... Sometimes you just... You know, sometimes you got to make some uh, changes. Sometimes it just doesn't work the first time. So, what I want to do is change the directions of which the mouse moves. Somehow I've developed uh, muscle memory for my DK bongos, which is something I would never say. But uh, when I hit this bongo, I expected it to turn left or turn the camera the other way, and it just tripped me out. So I'm just going to do that really quick on Jody Key. Sorry, it's not on the screen. Oh, your Creon asks, can any control adapter work on PC? It depends. Um, if it has a USB out port, it should work. Um, but I have, I can't really say everything works without actually testing everything. But a general rule of thumb, if it has an, uh, an output of a USB, it should work. Oh no, we got Seesaw. Alright guys, attempt number two, we did some fixes. I don't know how I feel about these fixes. Okay, attempt number two. Sometimes when you controller bend, it just doesn't work out the first time. That's fine. You only need one. Yeah, okay, now this makes sense to me. <laughs> It works, y'all. No, get up! I don't have a get up button on my bongo, so, you know, I can't really adjust to that. <laughs> maybe... Maybe you do need a jump button. Or you just gotta slap that DK bongo. Oh, no, 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 no! Okay. Dude, you have to slap it. I didn't realize how hard you had to slap this bongo to make it actually go. I feel real bad because I'm, like, shaking my whole desk and it actually hurt. I'm about to put on gloves for this. Was the dive jump potential? Yes. Um, 
in order to jump, you have to hit the bongos. I don't have a jump button. I don't have enough buttons to play with, to have jump, pretty much. Okay, uh, this might be a bad play. Oh my gosh. Yeah, shout outs to this dude on my side who knows what's up. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. You could actually... No jumps, DK bongos only? This controller might work out. <laughs> it might have took... It might have taken two tries. But after the redesigning the DK bongos, and we're actually just really fixing Joy to Key, we can actually play Fall Guys without... Um, jumping and also with a pair of DK bongos I'm telling you I'm eventually gonna get a win with this so let's keep testing it out see if we actually do need to include a jump button or maybe we could add a jump button by pressing two bongos at the same time something like that we'll see we'll see but I'm, I'm digging it so far <laughs> I when I lose I'll eventually explain to y'all what map how it is very possible to beat fall guys with no jumps I think I've seen someone do it you actually don't really need to have a jump button you can just dive over the things. You just have to get through the Black Friday sale. Come on, guys, let me through! Oh, it's far left! No! It's over! It's so. Oh, no, I'm still in, I'm still in. That's not 30 people, right? <laughs> not to sound like I am a bad player, but I'm doing just as fine with these DK bongos than I am with a regular controller. Except my right hand's getting a little bit red. Oh, you can't really tell the lighting's pretty bad. Can y'all hear that when I slap? Oh, it's over. It's over. I don't think I went. You can dive over this. You can. But it is very hard to get over this thing. You can? Okay, you can hear the... Oh, my hands will make it. Uh, they got insurance. Wait. I keep forgetting I have my camera movement to move left to right. Yeah, I, I will recommend, if you ever do this, go wear some gloves. Please stop grabbing me. I'm literally on DK bongas. Whoa! I don't really have that much... No! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, there's an example of what it looks like to play Fall Guys with DK bongas. I hope y'all enjoyed that little segment. We're going to keep going, by the way. But I hope you enjoyed what that looked like. Very fun, interactive. My hands are a little bit red. And you can't really tell, but my... Yeah, the lighting's still bad, but it's pretty red. <laughs> and I've only slapped the bongos a couple times. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to keep going. But I hope y'all enjoyed that like little discussion of how I want to do it. Now we're going to go for a win, so... I keep forgetting there's a clap feature for this. <laughs> and that about wraps up the controller mending panel for PAX Online. Before we wrap things up, remember this if you ever want a controller mend in the future. Just remember, anything can be a controller. With enough imagination and determination, you can figure out a way to make anything you want turn into a controller. And if you have any questions on how to get into controller bending or need any help with modding a controller, definitely hit me up on Twitter. You can DM me at superlewis underscore 64 if you have any questions. Also, Google is a great source if you have any questions on how to hook up your controller to the game you want to play. Before I head out, I wanted to give a big thanks to the PAX staff for allowing me to do my controller bending panel again for PAX. This is the first time I've ever done a pre-recorded panel, and the PAX staff has been really helpful in getting me started. But that would be all for the controller bending panel. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching it all the way through. I hope you all stay safe and enjoy the rest of PAX Online. Peace.